Hello and welcome to my lecture series on embed system. Uh, we will be discussing unit 1 which is introduction to ARM processor. First point of uh, this unit is ARM design philosophy. Try to understand uh, ARM is 32 bit processor. Uh, we are assuming that uh, we are having prior understanding of uh, 8 bit microcontrollers like 8051 and peak microcontroller. Uh, with this assumption, uh, I am uh, discussing uh, our design details. Uh, the agenda of today's discussion is about ARM processor, features of the ARM, history of ARM architecture, risk architecture and ARM design philosophy. About ARM, ARM is a 32 bit risk processor architecture developed by ARM corporation. Try to understand uh, ARM is at all not a chip manufacturing company. It design architecture, it try to simulate this architecture using VHDL Verilog uh, system C like programming language and then it develops synthesizable model and this models are adopted or licensed to a chip manufacturing company like a ST Microelectronics, NXP, Philips, uh, Texas Instrument etc. which also includes Qualcomm uh, company. So, uh, basically ARM offers two types of license to this company. Uh, one is implementation license and one is the uh, architecture license. In the implementation license, uh, basically uh, soft core uh, is offered as well as hard core is offered. Uh, soft core is basically uh, to soft core can be used uh, with any IC fab process uh, but it is less optimized and hard core is uh, optimized for specific manufacturing process. Architecture license enables licensee to develop their own processor compliant with ARM ISA. ARM ISA stands for ARM instruction set architecture. So, these licenses are issued to the chief manufacturing company and they can adopt uh, this design in their SOC design. SOC stands for system on chip. Features of the ARM, ARM cores are very simple compared to most of other general purpose processor. Now here uh, the general purpose processors means uh, Intel processors like 186, 3, uh, 802, 386, 386, 486, Pentium. These are general purpose processor with whom uh, ARM is compared and in comparison with this Intel processor, ARM cores are very very simple. Why they are simple? Because they believe on uh, reduced instruction set. Uh, philosophy. Uh, if you see the image, what you see that the today's SOCs uh, are made up of today's SOCs uh, today's SOCs are made up of uh, ARM processor along with uh, our bus architecture and uh, there is a VLSI peripheral bus and on the VLSI peripheral bus we are having lot of other peripherals like uh, timers, ADCs, DSCs, USBs, SPIs, I2C. So, a lot of peripherals are there along with the ARM. Now, if our processor becomes very, very small and compact, then chip manufacturer get opportunity to incorporate their own components which are plugged to the ARM architecture. So, uh, Second feature is uh, both ARM ISA and pipeline designs are aimed at minimizing uh, ener energy consumption. Uh, ARM ISA is an ARM instruction set architecture. The in instruction set architecture is highly optimized and flexible uh, so that user can adapt uh, instructions uh, so that power consumption can be reduced and the pipeline architecture uh, will also uh, reduce the uh, energy consumption of the chip. Uh, ARM architecture is highly modular. What does it mean that uh, you can use ARM microcontroller only or you can use along with ARM microcontroller uh, DSP coprocessor, math coprocessor and all prime cells associated with the ARM and uh, it is like a plug and play. Uh, if you want those component as a part of your system requirement, yes, you can adopt it. Otherwise, uh, you can skip them to reduce the cost. 
ARM processor provide high performance for embedded application. Now, uh, high performance uh, come will come from will come from two factors. Uh, one is the uh, uh, computational speed, uh, and secondly, uh, the energy consumption. Energy consumption. ARM offers uh, comparatively better performance uh, in that of, uh, in comparison with uh, the general purpose processor. Uh, history of ARM architecture. Uh, basically, ARM started in 1983 uh, as a Accor Risk machine. So it was a, a company which was manufacturing microprocessor for desktop machines. Uh, they manufacture uh, Risk uh, philosophy-based processor, uh, and their first processor was built around uh, using 25,000 transistor. Uh, and uh, which outperform Intel 80286 processor. Uh, in 1987, the second processor uh, was released. It was ARM version 2. Uh, it was offered with a coprocessor support. So, along with the ARM processor, coprocessor was also offered. Uh, later, ARM version 2 architecture was implemented with uh, on chip cache. So, cache is uh, a memory which is kept in between main memory and the processor. Uh, this cache memory also uh, substantially improves the computational speed of processor. So, ARM 3 was released with the uh, on chip cache support. Uh, in 1990, ARM funded, ARM was funded by Apple. It was a joint venture between Acon and Apple. Uh, at that time, Apple was in need of uh, design of uh, iPods and uh, video and uh, mp3 players and for that they were in need of very powerful processor and that was available with the account so they joined hand and start producing uh, jointly ARM processors and thereafter the name was not account but name was advanced risk machine uh, if you see uh, this table what you observe that uh, arm has uh, released different versions of uh, processor like version 1, 2, 3 like that up to version 7 and uh, version if you see the columns uh, version is there then year is there then features are there and then uh, implementation uh, implementation column is there uh, version v1 was implemented with r1 uh, let us take another example version 4 uh, it was introduced in 1996 and uh, it was supported with the uh, uh, thumb instruction set and uh, there were many implementation of the same version like ARM 7 TDMI S, ARM uh, 9 TDMI, then ARM 8, strong ARM etc. So, in a one version with a minor variations with the feature, uh, lot of implementations are released. As far as the today's scenario is concerned, uh, ARM offer uh, both types of uh, microprocessor and microcontrollers. Uh, one is the classic ARM uh, processor, uh, uh, which is offered uh, by ARM, like ARM 7, ARM 9, ARM 10, ARM 11. So, these are classic architecture and based on this classic architecture, latest architectures are provided like uh, ARM Cortex series. So, ARM Cortex is available uh, in the three form Cortex M, Cortex R and Cortex A. Cortex M starts for co microcontroller, Cortex microcontrollers, Cortex R stands for real time microcontroller and Cortex A stands for uh, application processor. So, for example, all your uh, cell phones as on today use uh, Cortex A series of uh, microcontroller and industrial applications like AC drives and uh, PLCs, they are using uh, Cortex uh, M kind of a microcontroller and engine management system, then wake uh, satellite launches, those kind of uh, systems uh, which where real time performance is very very important, uh, they uh, go for Cortex R series of microcontroller. Our ARM primarily believes on uh, risk architecture. So, uh, let us quickly discuss few points about the risk architecture. Uh, risk is a microprocessor design philosophy uh, aimed at developing simple and powerful instructions that are that execute within a single cycle at high clock speed. Use less hardware 
and leverages greater flexibility and intelligence in the software. CISC relies more on hardware for instruction functionality. RISC design places greater demand on the compiler. Uh, let us look at the image over here. Uh, so, there is a one flow of uh, CISC architecture uh, for uh, programming and there is another uh, flow for RISC architecture programming. Uh, generally what happens uh, for both uh, RISC or CISC processor, one has to write code in the C and uh, when C code is written, it should be compiled. So, design of the compiler, compiler with the CISC is uh, very, very compact, very small, bit simpler uh, in comparison with uh, compiler required for RISC processor. The reason is that uh, CISC is having a lot of uh, instructions available uh, for at a compiler, at, at the disposal of the compiler, so that it can very easily uh, build uh, assembly language code from C. Comparatively, uh, RISC is having very less number of instructions. So, uh, conversion of C program to assembly language program is a bit complicated. So, uh, there is a greater complexity on the side of compiler design and there is a less complexity on the on the side of uh, compiler design for SIS. However, uh, SIS processor are much more complex and they require more number of uh, silicon area in comparison with the RISC processor. RISC processor are much uh, compact, small, they use less number of transistors while uh, get, they, they get built. So, uh, and this is advantage for the RISC processor because RISC processors are primarily used in the handheld devices and handheld devices, uh, the microservice should be designed with very limited number of transistor so that uh, the SOC which is using the ARM processor uh, will be offering more space uh, to the peripherals like uh, ADC, DACs and uh, SPIs, I2Cs uh, and uh, USBs and Ethernets. More space will be left with those devices and less space will be consumed by processor and processor being uh, small in size and using less number of transistor naturally power consumption of the processor will be minimum because on a SOC processor is a major component is a bigger major component which consumes uh, more power. So, if processor is small less power is consumed and much more space is available for the SOC uh, system on chip that is not the case with the uh, SIS processor. SIS processor itself become very large and uh, there is a very little scope left to accommodate uh, other peripherals uh, on the uh, sys processor and that is why uh, you will never see on uh, cell phone intel inside because uh, power consumption and complexity of processor is so high uh, that it cannot be accommodated in a uh, cell phone. So, that is why ARM is very popular uh, in uh, cell phone architecture. Now, uh, let us discuss a design principle of uh, RISC. So, a RISC processor have reduced number of uh, instruction classes, for example, branch, uh, then uh, arithmetic logic operation, then uh, software interrupt. So, very uh, limited classes of instructions are given. So, in all not more than 50 instructions are there in uh, ARM 70 DMIS. However, uh, if you compare this uh, with the complex instruction set computer, huge number of instructions are available for small small operation and uh, the instruction in a fix, uh, fixed length to allow pipeline to fetch future instruction before decoding the current instruction. Uh, basically, uh, RISC processor use pipeline architecture. This pipeline architecture actually improves the speed of execution and also gives the uh, power consumption of the chip. In contrast, this processor, the instructions are often of variable size and take many cycles to execute. Uh, ARM offers uh, execution of each instruction on rising each rising edge of the clock. This is happening because of the pipeline architecture of ARM processor. Uh, this won't happen with the SIS microprocessor. The pipeline just now I talked 
the image of pipeline is like that, uh, that is observed on the screen. Uh, basically, what processor is doing continuously is it is uh, fetching instruction, then it is decoding the instruction, and then executing the instruction. In Cisco architecture, there is a great possibility that these operations are done in sequence and they take large number of clocks to execute one instruction. In contrast, uh, RISC architecture uses pipeline and this fetch decode execute operation uh, is performed in parallel. So, fetch while, while fetch operation is in progress, at the same time decode operation is in progress and uh, execute operation also in, is in progress. Uh, for example, uh, look at the program written at location 8000, at 8000 location LDR PC comma in the bracket PC plus hash 0. So, uh, this instruction is uh, resident at location 8004, NOP instruction is resident and 8008 uh, DCD uh, uh, jump address that this instruction is uh, existing. Now, when instruction at location 8000 in the execution at that time parallelly instruction at, at, at 8004 will be in a fetch uh, uh, in the decode stage and in uh, instruction at 8008 will be in a fetch state. So, the three operations are getting executed in parallel uh, which results into uh, execution of after filling the pipeline uh, what we will get is on every rising edge of the clock CPU one instruction will be executed and this is very 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 great feature of uh, risk design registers uh, risk uh, machines generally use a large general purpose of register set in comparison with the sys sys offer very limited uh, register like 8 or something but risk offers 16 plus different uh, general purpose register uh, the advantage is that uh, you bring everything in the largest uh, uh, whatsoever you want to process uh, on certain data, those data uh, can be brought in on the uh, registers and after having all data in hand, uh, one can think of processing it and after processing, uh, you write it on a memory again. Uh, so, uh, this uh, substantially reduces the uh, memory operations and all computations are done in on a register. So, speed improves. In contrast, uh, sys processor have uh, dedicated registers for a specific purpose and uh, they operate much more on the memory. Uh, this result into uh, more costly memory cycles and speed get reduced that of sys processor. Uh, ARM believes on uh, load store architecture. The idea is that there are separate instruction for loading data from memory to register and uh, separate instruction for storing data from register to memory. Advantage is that you bring everything in the register first, process it and then store. This reduces the costly memory cycles. Uh, in contrast uh, with the sys, uh, the, sys uh, the data processing operations can act on memory directly. Now, uh, let us focus on our uh, design philosophy. Uh, ARM designed uh, to be small to reduce the power consumption, less number of transistor uh, will result into less power consumption. Uh, high code density uh, is a requirement of uh, today's uh, embed system. Why? Because uh, the codes are stored in the memory and memory is the uh, costliest element in uh, the chip design. So, we want to uh, design instruction set architecture in a such a fashion that uh, in a small memory my entire application should fit. So, uh, ARM is designed around high code density by using ARM instruction set architecture. ARM has incorporated hardware debug technology, uh, ARM offered JTAG code uh, using JTAG code. Uh, the programmers can view uh, the flags in a single stepping mode uh, after every after execution of every instruction uh, they uh, they can watch the flags which are set and uh, based on flags the conditional execution is happening or not uh, those kind of a thing can be tested uh, in a single stepping uh, this reduces the design time of the product and uh, it it helps to come up with the product very fast 
so our uh, offer debug technology provided inside the chip uh, arm core is not a pure risk architecture what what arm has done okay it believes on uh, risk architecture however some features of sys processor are also incorporated uh, in the risk architecture for example multiply uh, instruction uh, it's a purely example of complex instruction then multiply and accumulate if I want to implement uh, y is equal to y plus a into b into terrace to n, so this kind of operation you can do uh, using uh, MAC architecture present inside R. Uh, so, this kind of a multiple and accumulate instructions are purely example of uh, sys architecture. So, R offers this architecture with some flavor of sys also, so that performance can be improved. So, that is all uh, on uh, today's session, first session on uh, ARM design philosophy. Uh, in summary, uh, what we have discussed is uh, introduction to ARM, then uh, what is licensing policy of the ARM, then uh, what is, uh, what are the different features associated with the ARM, uh, then uh, and finally the ARM design philosophy. So, thank you very much for attending this session. Thank you. Bye.